singing, don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing is going to be all right. Do 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 Hope you sing along at home, everybody that's watching. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe. Don't think of it as two points dropped. Think of it as a point gained. Think of it as a point gained, everybody. Like, let's let's not do the negativity. Let's not do the negativity. Remember what they said on the fan cams in the last game. Don't be negative. Negativity doesn't help. It, it's, it's everybody else's fault. Stop hating Pochettino just because just he's ex-Tottenham. Stop paying Pochettino because he's ex-Tottenham. Because it's not his fault. It's not his fault we always come out of second half looking terrible. It's not his fault like we were doing a, a weird-ass disorganized structure again. It's not his fault that Enzo is cooking in midfield, so we decide let's just push him to left wing. Let's just just go over there, Enzo. Just, just, just go over there, mate. Just go over there. Chill well. It's not, it's not, it's not his fault he's inverting. It's not his fault. Like, Pochettino's got a plan, in it? Caicedo playing with zero support around him. Ah, it's fine. The players are just figuring themselves out. Gallagher always in somebody else's position. Always. But they're just figuring each other out. They're just figuring each other out. That's all. That's all. Like it says here in the headline, we came back to be happy. Be happy, everybody. What's there to complain about? So it's not like this Brentford team lost 12 in their last 15. It's not like they're five points off the drop. It's not like they're missing their entire back four. And we could barely create anything in that second half. It's not our fault that we always come out of second halves looking worse. It's not our fault the team fell asleep. I mean, I wonder what they did at that halftime team talk. But it's Pochettino's birthday. Who cares? This is birthday. Wish Pochettino a happy birthday. That's probably what they spent half time doing. Everyone just brought him a little cake. Everyone held hands in the dugout and said, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You look like a fucking prick. And I can't even be asked for the fourth line. Just fuck you. Hey, there's the rhyme. Fuck you. And fuck every single one of you that tried to run this toxic positivity bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Now, for Poch. First off, I'll give him the first off because we did generate chances. We ended up 1-0 up. But why is it every single game the team comes out at halftime and they look better than us? Why? Why? Like, I've got to the point where most managers just have better game management than Pochettino. And it is what it is. We're stuck with this guy. But it's the directors too. Like, like I could talk about Poch all I want to talk about. I, I'm gonna, I need to start talking about these directors because when is it going to end? Well, what word to Robbie and DT? When is it going to end? This is taking too long now. Well, now, <laughs> three months ago, it was too long. What, what, what is it going to take? You have a whole full week off. We don't even play next week. Act, act. Get rid of him. Get rid of him and bring somebody else in because I'm sick to death of watching us drop ground. As soon as it, as soon as the first goal went in, and we went into half time, the first thing I'm thinking is, what happens in that second half? Because we actually look pretty good coming out of that first half. As soon as we get the goal, the game opens up a little bit. We start to look a little bit more confident in possession. Keep it up. Now, what do we do? Twenty yards further back. We go back 20 yards again. Backwards again, ole ole. Backwards again. Backwards again. Backwards again, ole ole. Typical fucking Chelsea. It's typical. Us going back 20 yards, it only makes the players more tense. And that comes from the manager. The mentality that we have to constantly drop points from winning positions, it comes from the manager and it comes from his game management. So. We're screwed. 
You see why I go into games depressed all the time and I go into games anxious and nervy because I never, I always know it's not going to be a consistent 90 minutes. I always know what I'm going to see in 20 minutes is not going to be what I see for 90 minutes. And it happened yet again. Individually, we were poor. Um, De Sassi, Colwell, both terrible. De Sassi just backs off everybody. Colwell, not good enough, needs to really improve his physicality. Really does. The only thing that's given me a bit of patience is, again, he spent so much time at left back. And also, AC was also the same type of player where it took him a while to build up his physicality and grow into his body. So I'll give Cole the benefit of the doubt, but that has to improve. Enzo started the game so well, and then we push him back into left wing. Caicedo, yet again, works his arse off. Defended everything he could, but when you give him that much space to try and cover by himself, there's going to be holes. There's going to be. The fact that we didn't close Wissa down in the box for the second half, you have Gallagher just fucking ball watching. He has tried that overhead kick about four times in that game. And you just let him keep going. You let him keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. And you let Brentford get more and more aggressive. Thankfully, Palmer turned up with an assist. That's all he really turned up with. But he got an assist and De Sassi got a header. Cool. That's all I'm really saying because the performance other than that was not good. Not good at all. But more points dropped, more ground dropped. Fucking brilliant. Fucking brilliant. But you know what the narrative is going to be? The narrative is going to be um, Jackson should have scored his chance. Palmer should have scored his chance. I will ask people this too. What if Brentford didn't hit the post twice? What if Wissa got the other two overhead kicks in? What about that? Can we run the same narrative for them? Or does it only work when it's Chelsea? Does it only work when it's us? Are we the only fan base that expects every single chance that we make to go into the back of the net? Or are we the only ones that are judged by that metric by rival fans? A clue. Yes to both of those questions. To both of them. Because that's where we are. And like a lot of people are now starting to drink the Kool-Aid that all the rivals are giving because the results just won't improve. Enzo and Caicedo are not my problem coming out of that game. The attack wasn't good enough. The defense wasn't good enough. The system wasn't good enough. The game management was pathetic. But hey, now the match going fans are talking about Pochettino. <laughs> about time. About time. Only two months too late. But I hope you've finally, finally seen what we've been trying to say. This manager is a problem. Regardless of what you think about our ownership, our directors, things won't change with this manager in charge. Directors, their heads need to roll too. Because they're the ones running this club right now, them and Igbali, and the three of them are just sitting there and letting this season get tanked. The three of you are disgraces. The three of you are absolute disgraces, and you need to act, and you need to act now. It's now just about damage control. Wake up. Wake the fuck up while we still have a chance. Because this season's dying in front of our eyes. We're on life support. We are about two or three defeats away from forget about Europe. And just forget about Europe. So it's time to act. But you know what? I'm not letting Chelsea ruin my mood anymore. I've got a night out to enjoy. Fuck this crap. I'm gone. Potch out.